Hey everyone, uh, it's Chris. Sorry, there's a bit of an echo, um, but hopefully we can get that sorted out. So, uh, this is just a little update. Um, to everyone who, who left little comments, I appreciate it. Um, so, just to kind of talk about things. So, Sunday, Sunday this March 17th, my dad was sick, he had a stomach bug, and so, sorry, there's, if you hear some noise, there, there are people here, um, we're kind of, we're, we're just, I'm taking a break right now from just sorting out a bunch of stuff, um, it just it just kind of wears on you after a while but so um what was i saying oh he had a stump bug and he uh i can't really see the screen that well so i'm hoping that i'm hoping that i uh, probably the light's real bright I don't know, is this, is it working out for you guys? Because it's hard for me to tell. I got like a, oh, can't do that. Okay, so anyways, um, he had a stomach bug, and he just wasn't feeling good, and um, didn't think anything of it. He wasn't too bad Sunday. Monday, again, wasn't too bad. Tuesday morning, he was in rough shape and my older sister um, I passed along that he was he was going back and forth to the bathroom um, he was nauseated just all kinds of stuff and he was sitting in his chair just going <sighs> And so I recommended that he go to the hospital. And I said, just go to the emergency room. You go, um, and then I'll pick you up after work or whatever. And he, no, no, I'm fine. I don't need it. And I told that to my sister. My sister called him, got the girlfriend involved. He didn't answer text, didn't answer the phone. So I get back. I left it at 6.40 to go to work. I get back, it's like 4.10 maybe. And I greet my dogs, petting them. And then I let them out. And I don't hear the TV or anything, so I'm thinking maybe he's napping. You know, I don't know. And I round the corner to go into the living room. And he was laying on the floor on his back and he was like laying down but like this his neck and head leaned against his uh his the the, the, the i can't think of the name of the the on his recliner the foot so you could like lift up and you can lay back it was laying against that and his hands were at his side and i just looked at him and his eyes were closed, and I thought, what are you doing? Are you sleeping? So I went to turn to walk away, but then I just, I was like, and I looked back at him, and I just watched his chest, and I counted to about 20, and I did not see any movement. And I thought, Oh no. For people who don't know, I found my mom dead. And so the thought of my my dad was a month into 79. And so clearly he's he's lived. Um but the thought of 
finding your other parent. So I walked over to him and I said, all right, dad, wake up. And I grabbed his arm and I put my other arm on his shoulder and I went to pick him up. And as I moved him, his whole body moved and uh, rigor mortis had set in. So from some time after I left, 640, to at least noon, um, from 640 to noon, he died in that range. Rigor mortis takes about three to four hours to, to set in, and it would hit it set in. So, um, I was I was mad at first. I was very angry because he's a very stubborn person. And when you tell him you should go to the doctor, he would no, I'm fine. And then he would feel forced. When my channel first started, it was actually about this time, two years ago, uh, I, did an, um, I did a turkey for Easter. And I'm not religious, I don't celebrate the religion. It was just, it was turkey. It was just a way to celebrate. So, I made a turkey, mashed potatoes, stuffing, all the stuff. He had had a, a kidney stone leading up to the week. And I'm sure people could probably find the video where I, I make a comment about it, but I was very, very angry. So, what happened was, I, leading up to it, that was a, a Sunday. Leading up to it, like Thursday, he was in pain because he had a kidney stone. I don't know if I just said that. Sorry. I got so much, like, it's just fog in my brain. So he had a kidney stone, and he kept saying he wanted to go to the doctor or go to the hospital. And I was like, well, you know, go. I'll take you or whatever. No. <laughs> Friday, same thing. No. Saturday, same thing. No. Sunday. I make the turkey, we eat at noon, I pick it all up, put it all away, and then he says, okay, now, being like 12.50 p.m., I want you to take me to the hospital, I'm ready to go now. And I'm like, what? So when it was inconvenient for you, being me, is when it would, he wanted it to be convenient. Um, which is something that really, really annoys me. So, took him to the hospital. It was an hour drive. We got there at 2. We stayed from 2 until like 11.50. He had a test run and everything, and they said, yeah. So, we got two options. We can keep you for observation and hope that you pass it. And then you can get picked up the next day. Or we can give you medication to help you pass it. Uh, and then you just catch it like a little, you just pee through a strainer. And then you take your little thing through the strainer. And you dump it into a contamination thing. You send it in and they'll tell you what it was made of. So that you can avoid those kind of things. He did not want to do the overnight. He refused the medication. I exploded. Because I, I, I had to stay there the whole time. I exploded on him in the room. You drug me here. You, now you're refusing to stay and you're refusing the medication. You're picking one of them because you're not wasting my time. I was so furious. You're not wasting my time. So he took the medication. We get back. He, in front of me, throws the medication away in the garbage. I ain't taking that. I said, good, I'm glad. So we get home about one in the morning, Monday morning. I got to work. I got to be up at five. I go to bed. I wake up. I'm tired. And he goes, huh, 
I passed it at like 2.30. Good. I'm glad. I'm, I'm legit. I'm glad it's gone. It's very annoyed. So, all that's to say, after I found him, not knowing, and I'll get into everything, not knowing what happened, death from dehydration, um, maybe a, 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 a flu, something, his body shut down, I have no idea. I was very angry that Tuesday night. Very, very angry. I had, I had what I, I what I called um, rage cry. There's been a lot of fires around here lately. I don't. Today alone, I've heard four fire trucks. Anyways. So, I, I was just mad. We, we had an autopsy done, but I was so mad. Because I'm like, why didn't you go to the hospital? You, you could have, whatever it was, you could have been saved. So fast forward, family's here. We're getting everything sorted. I'm taking over possession of the house. And... Uh, let's see, that was Tuesday. Thursday, about noon, the sheriff, he shows up, and he's got the autopsy details. And it turned out that my father had a massive heart attack. In 2014, uh, November of 2014, November 14th, actually, he went to the hospital with chest pains. On my birthday, I'm sorry, the day after my birthday, November 18th, he had a triple bypass. Um, so less than 10 years, one of those arteries in the bypass 100% clogged, which triggered it. He's been complaining about bad, bad memory issues. And it turned out that he had both of his arteries in his neck were blocked 96%, 99%. So the memory issues were because he's not getting enough blood pumping into the brain. Well, the thought is he got up from his chair, walked, it hit. You got basically three arteries, two to the brain, one in the heart, all seizing up at the same time. He probably lost consciousness, fell backwards, but he was dead before he hit the ground. It was fast. He did suffer that morning with, with breathing problems and, of course, a stomach bug and stuff like that. But in the end, even if he had went to the hospital, they would not have been looking at the heart or the neck. Because he, they would have thought he had a bug. And he, he probably did. He probably did have a, a stomach flu or something. So he would have, his heart would have stopped. He would have died. Regardless. He was, like if you say there are 10 steps in life. I'm sorry, not 10 steps. 10 stages. 10 stages. One or two are the warnings. Three, four, five, six, seven, gradually gets worse. Eight, nine, ten, there's no coming back from. Eight, nine, ten. He was at like nine, three quarters. Uh, he was pretty much dead on Sunday.
because they could not have rushed him in and had surgery to do this one and then at least get one unclogged for him because no one knew except him My mom knew she had a heart problem, heart condition. Well, uh, she had, uh, she needed, uh, she, she needed every valve. Um, and she ignored it. She's not here anymore. That furiates me with her, but I, I love her. I love my mom. My mom was the best. I loved her to death. Um, There isn't a day that goes by that I don't think about her. Whether you like me or not, I am more of a reflection of my mom. Uh, but sorry, I'm drinking iced tea. Um, Yeah, my dad, um, he was, he was pretty much gone. And then we found out through the autopsy that he had level three kidney disease or stage three kidney disease. And there's four stages and the fourth is like fatal or, or it's maybe it's fatal. It, it's not good. Um, he had emphysema. Um, he was a smoker long, long time ago. He, he he quit, I think, before I was born. My mom was a smoker, too, at the time. She quit, but, well, she actually quit. This, <laughs> she quit the same, day, the same day as my dad because they were playing cards with my mom's sister and her husband. And my dad bet, and he didn't have any more money. So he threw his pack of cigarettes in. My mom said, uh, if you lose this hand with those cigarettes, how about this? How about you quit? And he goes, okay. Well, he lost the hand. So on the way home, they get in the car and my mom pulls out her pack of cigarettes and she lights it. And my dad reaches over and takes a cigarette away from her and flicks it out the window. And then my, she's just like, what are you doing? And he reaches over and he grabs the pack and he crumples them up. And he throws them on the floor and he goes, if I quit, you quit. <laughs> and she goes, I didn't agree to that. And he goes, doesn't matter. If I have to quit, you have to quit. So they both quit together. <laughs> I mean, if I'm going to lose, you're going to lose too. But... <laughs> Yeah, it, there's been some other videos where I've, I've talked about him and issues that we had. Give me a second. Okay, sorry about that. We've got people here. And uh, I'm in a I'm in a new area, new a new setup. This will be gone, but okay. o'clock. Feels weird. I'm the youngest. My oldest is, sister is 52. My other will be 50. And I'm 44, I'll be 45, 20, 21, I'll be 21. But it feels weird. I'm an orphan. I can say the F word now and I can't get grounded. Yeah, I'm an adult now. <laughs> but that was Tuesday. And there's just so much stuff you got to go through. You got to call the creditors. You got to 
get bills canceled or credit cards canceled. You got to get a hold of bills. Get a hold of people. Get get things switched. It's all the nonsense that you just don't want to deal with. And on top of all that, I have to, well, I don't have to, but I'm going to. I have to write a eulogy. It's Monday night. I don't know if you can see it. I got a red outline on my screen, but I don't know if it shows um, down here or not. But, oh, no, get that off. But I'm supposed to write a thing and have it sent in until tomorrow. Uh, she's not, like, reading it she's just she just the the, the lady that the service is going to be she just wants to have it and the, the i have a couple things i want to talk about but like the things they're not they're not formulated enough to put it on paper um i have a couple stories um if you know me which most of you you don't know me enough you know me but you don't know me um, I have a very dark sense of humor. Um, so, um, my dad did too. And so I am going to start my eulogy by saying that the last words my father ever said to me was, I would rather die than watch your Detroit Lions have another good season. Is that something he actually would say? <laughs> I got I got dogs. Yeah. You know. One of the stories I'm going to tell is for his 79th birthday I took him out to eat steakhouse and I ate all mine he did not he did not um, sorry uh, I'm getting like four hours of sleep a night if I'm lucky, I get five. I just, I, I, I'm able to fall asleep. I just can't stay asleep. And then all day, you're just in this fog. It just drags on. I, I'll get back to the story. I, I, sorry, my, I'm all over the place. I, I'm not good at processing things with other people I'm better to I like to be by myself think about things and, and it just works it out you know it just kind of and everyone's here a lot and it becomes difficult to be able to disassociate to just be alone you can be alone, but you're in a, you're alone in a house full of people. So you're not alone. And it makes it difficult because people will want to talk or, hey, have you done this? Hey, have you checked this? Hey, have you done this? And it's, I'm, I, I'm, I'm not married, I don't have kids, so, and I've always mostly been single, so I have always processed and relied on myself, willingly, but I feel like it, I'm walking in mud when I'm not allowed to. This week, so the funeral will be Wednesday. Um, Thursday I'm going back to work I'm going back to work because I just 
I want to be away. I want to I want to be around the guys. And then I'll I'll be alone Thursday night, Friday night. And then the weekend I'm kind of getting some more things done. Um I'm moving things, clearing things out, cleaning things. Uh it, It's just it's going to be attacking one room at a time over the weekend. So I, I, I almost have to do my videos during the week so that I can spend a Saturday doing something and hopefully Sunday I can just relax and enjoy it. Um, work has been great. Coworkers have just reached out to me. Been good. It's been nice. Family too, you know. Um back to that story. Apologies. Oh man. Iced tea is so good. So we're at a steakhouse. It's his birthday was February eighteenth. So this is February twentieth, maybe twenty first. Oh, oh yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one right there. Okay, so sorry. <laughs> so we we are eating. He doesn't eat all his steak. I eat everything that I had. And so she, the lady, the waitress comes up and she goes, uh, "Do you want a doggy bag or to go box?" Sorry. And he goes, "Yeah." So she comes back and she brings him one. Now, he had been eating like a ribeye, and so ribeyes are fatty. And so he was cutting and taking a bite, and he's chewing. But then sometimes you just get hard chunks of fat. I hate the fat. And he was spitting it out and putting it on his plate. Not like, but you know, putting it on his plate. So she gets the to-go box. He puts the, the meat, the, the rest of the steak in there closes the lid and he slides it across the table to me and he goes here you go that's that's for your dogs so they'll you know a little treat for them I was like okay the the waitress comes back up with the check she sets it down and she goes oh let me get your plates because now my dad's done eating so she's gonna take his plate and he goes oh wait a second and he takes his plate, he opens up the doggy bag, and he dumps in the chewed up gristly parts into the to-go box. I know what it's for, my dogs. He knows what it's for, my dogs. The waitress doesn't know what he's doing that for. He then closes the lid, slides it back to me, and he goes, that's so you can have that. He's meaning I can take it back to my dogs. The waitress doesn't know that. She gives me a look. Like, I'm suddenly a big fan of chewed up fatty steak. And she just looks at me and I'm like, and she walked away. So that woman thinks that I'm a freak because I like to chew on already chewed up gristly fat on steak. <laughs> I, was, I was like, yeah, you should have worded that one better. That would have been cool and he was like what and then it dawned on him he's like oh you didn't want me to say something i was like let's let's you just not talk anymore would help both of us actually <sighs> but <sighs> but that's where that's where things stand right now it's about 29 minutes that's kind of where everything stands right now. Um, it's it's just one of those things where it'll take me a little bit of time to kind of get back in the rhythm of things. Um, 
Today's Monday, the 25th, so I'm hoping, well, I'm hoping, Monday of next week, I will get back into recording. Maybe I'll, this is like a little alcove area, so maybe I'll get something in here so it doesn't sound like there's an echo, because there clearly is. This room was packed with stuff, and it took me two days to empty and clean the whole thing. Still got to do some more. I got to do the living room. Tomorrow I'm doing the kitchen. I got to clear off the counters because there's a bunch of stuff on there. I got to get, you know, get my stuff on there. But, yeah, it's just, uh, you know, it's something that everyone's going to experience, unfortunately. But I just want to say thanks to everybody who reached out. Um, I don't really know what to say right now. I also have so many things just running through my mind that I'm trying to put down so I can write this eulogy. And... Um, they're just not coming to me. And uh, the lady wants it by tomorrow morning. And I told my sisters that I don't care about her deadline. You know, if I send it to her tomorrow night, she gets it tomorrow night. If I don't have it done tomorrow night and I get it Wednesday, she wants it by Tuesday. Otherwise, she won't let people talk. And I'm like, yeah, it's not. She doesn't make the rules on this one. I'll sh I won't share anything. I'll just walk in Wednesday with the paper and say, here it is. I didn't have time to send it to you. What you what's she going to do? Tell me I can't? I'll make a scene. Like, you're not going to tell me. You don't control anything. Sorry. It's not how this works. So, my paper will be written and it'll be ready when it's ready. And that's just... The way it is. There's no deadline there. So, it's been 32 plus minutes. I'll just go ahead and end it here. But I do appreciate, uh, like I say, everyone reached out to me. Uh, next week, I'll get back into it. Maybe maybe I'll record something on Friday. Um, maybe when... Wednesday. When... Uh, Wednesday's a funeral. Maybe Thursday when I'm going to go to work. I'll upload again. I'll get back into the rhythm on Thursday. Getting to work. Just kind of going through everything. And maybe maybe then I will go through the process and I will update. I will uh, uh, upload then. Oh, oh, man. I'll do it Thursday. Yeah. So anyways. This is me. I'm going to go ahead and sign off. I'm going to end this video. I won't tell you to subscribe <laughs> because there's better videos on my channel. I won't even ask you to give a thumbs up. This is just uh, just me kind of letting everyone know that I'm, I'm good. Um, just uh, kind of want to just be done with this this uh, period and get back into the regular like next week when I can record I will I'll start to feel some like semblance of normalcy it won't be and it it may reflect that from time to time in my eyes or in my face um but just, just know i'm i'm getting back into it and there will be times when things hit me i've actually been more sad you know both my parents are gone now but i've been more sad having flashbacks and reflecting on my mom passing more because this funeral ultimately will be that closure 
for both of them. This will be the closure for my parents. Uh, and as much as I want to just be done with it, I just want to, I just, I need to, I want to be done with it because I just, I want to get back into the life. I don't, today was, was the worst day for me feelings wise because all morning I was in this funk. I wish I could, it was, I was, it was like a depression and I was, I was taking a shower and I just had this overwhelming sadness, panic attack. Like I didn't know why I was so sad. Today was the lowest part, which is another reason why I'm making the video because I, I'm trying to get out of that. And the bet, you know, if you deal with depression, to me, the best thing that you can do is get out of that headspace mentally. Just change. If I sit around and wallow, I'll just get worse. So I got to get out. I got to, I got to start to, I was, I was, you know, folding laundry and, and um, doing this, doing that, thinking about what I'm going to do in the living room, thinking about what I'm going to do in the kitchen, what I'm going to do with the bedroom, what I'm going to do this and that, and da 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 da. All these things to clear my mind, give me something to do, and hopefully when I'm done, which it's, it's going to take some time, when I'm done, I will feel changed because the, enough time has passed. But I'm not there yet. So, I appreciate everyone's um, comments. I appreciate uh, just everyone reaching out. And uh, if you guys ever need anything from me, just let me know. So, it's uh, really all I can say right now. Not that I'm hiding anything, but that I don't have anything else. Oh, I can. You want me to share something? I'll share something. I'm sitting on a, on a gel cushion. <laughs> there you go. I'm sit it's actually not comfortable right now because I'm high on this chair. And I'm close to the wall, so I can't. <laughs> wall. It don't give. All right. Well, Hopefully Thursday, I'll start updating. Um, I'll get back into the regular uh, chat. And, um, you know, the world will keep spinning. And I'll adapt. So, until next time, have a good day, have a good night. And thank you. Seriously, thank you.